Hey everyone, it's Vash again, and recently there's been a lot of Devil May Cry news, so let's talk about that for a while. So, ever since producer Hiroyuki Kobayashi told PlayStation Blog that the future of the Devil May Cry series was uncertain, a piece of information came out that Capcom enjoyed a net income increase of over 100%, thanks in part to Special Edition, which, quote, sold well. After that came a statement from Masachika Kawada, producer for the Resident Evil series, who said that there were currently no plans for a new Devil May Cry game. And then, on the 23rd page of Capcom's annual integrated report for the 2014 fiscal year, there was a listing for a new Devil May Cry game in the pipeline, along with a lot of other series that are apparently being worked on. Recently, there's also been some unverified claims of Ruben Langdon, voice of Dante, talking about the possibility of a Devil May Cry 5 at some conventions. It seems like Devil May Cry 5 is all but officially confirmed. I mean, either that or we have a new phone game coming. So, yeah, lots going on as you can see. With this integrated report, my mind immediately shoots off in no less than three directions. The one that I immediately thought was that this news was referencing Special Edition. Now, there's really only one reason that I think that it could be Special Edition. The fiscal year for Capcom starts on April 1st and ends March 31st of any given year. Now, this Devil May Cry title is slotted for the fiscal years ending in 2016 and beyond. Special Edition launched in June of 2015, putting it at the the beginning of Capcom's current fiscal year, which technically would satisfy this inclusion. The second conclusion that I was able to reach was that this was potentially old news, only relevant to plans that they had towards the end of their 2014 fiscal year. Seeing as how this information was relevant until March 31st of this year, after which they could have easily dropped development depending on how support for the rest of the series stood. Finally, the last conclusion that I was able to draw was that both statements were correct. You know, just because they don't have any concrete plans today doesn't mean that they won't tomorrow, for example. Now, sure, if you're like me, then no plans means literally no plans at all of any kind, but at the same time, plans could have multiple meanings within reason. With this information, I'm both incredibly excited, but also very worried. It's no secret at this point that Capcom's view of the Devil May Cry franchise is shaken at best. I think that Itsuno himself put this relationship into perspective best when he said this, quote, I think I'm happy with the performance of the game. He says, talking about the reboot here, by the way, if it had been a world-changing hit, it might have changed the course of the series by becoming the new Devil May Cry." End quote. To me, I read that as an open admission that, at some point or another, Capcom was perfectly comfortable with the reboot doing what reboots usually do, that is, replacing the old franchise entirely. So, I'm still wondering exactly how highly Capcom thinks of Devil May Cry. But even more simple than that, I'm a little worried about this one fundamental thing. How much time is this dev team really going to have for this theoretical Devil May Cry 5? Or another way of phrasing, how rushed is the game going to be? Because I'm really worried that this game will get the same treatment that DMC4 got. And I have this fear based on a couple of different things. Judging purely by statements and observations made after the launch of Devil May Cry 4 and Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, time, or the lack thereof, has been extremely detrimental to Devil May Cry. There was a little over a two-year gap between the release of Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition and the release of Devil May Cry 4 Vanilla, which, for the record, does not account for any downtime between the final dev day of 3 Special Edition and the first dev day of 4. Now, if a two-year gap yields Devil May Cry 4, and a year and a half yields DMC 4 Special Edition, then could anything less than two, or maybe even three years, be adequate? Is it enough time? On the one hand, Devil May Cry 4 is a game that lacks a lot of good level and weapon variety, the cornerstones of what allow Devil May Cry to be good. And yes, it's true. Believe it or not, according to Itsuno, Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition was a project that had a year and a half of dev time. A year and a half of dev time that yielded all of three new characters, only one of whom strongly used unique assets. 
along with a total of 10 costumes to put on those characters with some microtransactions as well. All in all, I can sum up the process by saying that Devil May Cry 4 at launch at least lacked adequate content to fully develop its two playable characters. Devil May Cry 3 and 4 were great. Absolutely, but at the same time we have so many places to go and so many improvements to make that, speaking honestly, having a Devil May Cry 5 come out without it having as much time as possible to incubate and grow or, hell, just reach a reasonable completion state is just ridiculous. In fact, let's dwell on that for a second. Now, of course, I give Devil May Cry 4 a lot of admittedly deserved flack for being more than a little limp in terms of content, but I know that those issues likely come from a horribly unfulfilled development process that left us with a very underwhelming game regardless. In spite of whatever people may think that I think about Devil May Cry, I truly do think the world of this franchise. And I think that if Devil May Cry 5 would be the final Devil May Cry game period, I would like for it to go out on a bang rather than a whimper. Basically, I just want a game that is truly excellent with no qualifying statements. Nothing like the game was great, but it was a little restrictive in its control like Devil May Cry 3 was with style switching. Or the game is really good, but it's half finished like Devil May Cry 4. And no matter how you spin it, taking Devil May Cry up to that potential is going to take a lot of development time. Or in other words, lots of money. It's easy to see that I'm advocating for an extended development cycle here. Surely more than two or even three years of development to go into a single game. Now, of course, a parallel could be drawn to the argument's detriment. Well, you see, Vash, it took us five years to see DMC Devil May Cry. And look how that turned out. Yeah, Actually, let's do that. Within DMC is a host of unique environments with enemy and weapon lists that, even though they come nowhere near Devil May Cry's 3 and 4 in terms of mechanical depth and expression, for various reasons, it did have some decent variety to it, even though it was unrealized because of how the devs approached the core mechanics. But imagine, if you will, a game that had the production time of DMC, or at least its breadth, but the focus, the strengths, and the fun fundamentals of the original series. Doesn't that sound like a good game? A game that's actually, you know, finished. But good. Like, really good. All the time. I mean, I would like to play that game, and I think a lot of people would as well, but at the same time, who knows? Playing a finished, realized, modern Devil May Cry may just be a wish unique to me, I don't want to speak for anybody else here. But reality reasserts itself further with this fundamental question. Who would fund this dev time? Granted, more hands make lighter the work, so theoretically even a two-year dev time isn't a death sentence. If only there was a dev team that could get the job done well. A dev team, the strength and scope of which an industry titan like Capcom could certainly provide if given proper incentive to do so. But unless you have a whole dev team of Dio's capable of developing within the frozen time, I'd say that that would be an anomaly, an exception, rather than the rule. Now, it comes full circle in a way. No matter how you look at it, I need to broach the subject of the GameSpot article in reference to the sales of Special Edition. As I read the article, a wave of bewilderment fell where excitement and joy should have been. It all comes down to this. What on earth does selling well mean exactly? Saying that Special Edition was partially to thank for a 100% jump in profit tells me nothing really about how well Special Edition actually did. With no personable context or exact numbers, I see unnecessary ambiguity instead of celebration here. And to follow this up with two separate comments from two separate producers saying that there are no plans for a new game currently isn't exactly a point in your favor. A game could have very little dev time or money budgeted out for it, so 
even if it sells in the hundreds of thousands, it could be described as selling well. Need I remind that this is a AAA industry that sees games like Dark Souls with 2 million units sold as a supreme accomplishment, whilst Tomb Raider can breach 6 million units and still be deemed a failure. These statements are all incredibly relative and presented without substantial context, and that's really my point here. And this article really isn't worthy of any size of relief or rejoice, not in the state it's in now. But likewise, considering how the only thing that could be said for Definitive Edition or a lot of games that come out is that they didn't do all that well, apparently, and who knows, perhaps I should just take it on faith that enough people, myself included, showed our repeated support for Devil May Cry with our wallets. As time progresses in this industry, a certain degree of diminishing returns comes into play, and the amount of money poured into a project vastly dwarfs the actual quality of said project. But there's a difference between getting the funding for a game you need, and getting an unreasonable amount of funding for no real use. And I'm fully aware of the concept of art from adversity, but a development cycle that has a rocky start, or end point, or some hiccups along the way, which in fairness, would still happen regardless of how long the game takes, is not the same thing as a development cycle that wasn't given proper time on top of those issues. But honestly, I take the performance of Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition seriously. That's why, even after taking a stand against the frankly unacceptable state of the game after so many years of the project starting, on top of some unacceptable microtransactions that have absolutely no place in a Devil May Cry game in any capacity, I bought myself a copy, effectively being the third time that I've bought Devil May Cry 4. And in this respect, I still worry that come time to hash out a budget, Special Edition's performance could be cited to Devil May Cry 5's detriment. And that really brings me to my point. I think I've had it up to here with how this franchise has been treated. You see, a game like Devil May Cry... A franchise from such humble beginnings would eventually reinvent itself into a paragon of expressive gameplay and interactivity, the theoretical pinnacle of what this medium could and should achieve, and with all of this potential to grow and improve on top of that. But instead, it's treated like some B-list, dumpster-tier franchise. Now, sure, Devil May Cry has had its missteps here and there, but Nowhere, absolutely nowhere, does this mean that the franchise should end where it is now. I'm actually quite off-put by that comment from Itsuno about the reboot taking the place of the original franchise. It really just put into perspective for me that I may just be asking for a dream to be realized that nobody else at Capcom really cares about or sees themselves. I'll be frank. When I see someone in a comment section or a chat room say that Devil May Cry is dead, it makes me pretty sad. Whether it's said jokingly or seriously, seeing Devil May Cry weekly limp around with legs that were made unstable by the very same company that was supposed to make them strong is unacceptable. And the fact that I'm so doubtful, not only of Devil May Cry 5 happening, but of it getting the time and effort that it deserves, when logically this franchise should be flourishing and rife with success, speaks to just how badly trust has been damaged since Devil May Cry 4 Vanilla. I'll close with this. I'm happy that Devil May Cry has yet to be given the Mega Man treatment from Capcom. Quite the opposite, potentially. I'm happy, actually overjoyed, that they still acknowledge Devil May Cry as one of their major franchises, even if it's only for the sake of their shareholders. But after all that's happened this past generation, I think it's really time for Devil May Cry to either show a pulse or it's time for Capcom to bury the body. Potential is meaningless if it isn't realized. And when I look at Devil May Cry 3 and 4, and both of their special editions, I see nothing but the most extreme potential. But if no one at Capcom sees that potential being worth the money required to give it an adequate dev time and resources, effectively handicapping it in the same way that 4 eventually was, then is there even really a point in a Devil May Cry 5? I'm, at best, incredibly doubtful of the chances of this franchise getting the game that it deserves. And that fear doesn't come out of some baseless speculation. It comes from the knowledge that games are, more than ever, becoming more and more time and money intensive to develop. 
to a fault, at least in the AAA sphere. This is on top of the fact that a small amount of dev time has yielded products that weren't adequately iterative. Of course, I'm not ignorant to other examples from other franchises. Games with years of dev time don't always turn out the way they logically should. Even now in this year of 2015, some of the biggest games of the year are straight up missing chunks of content, proper quality assurance, or both. But I think that we can agree that there's a difference between a game that feels finished without a handful of additional features or modes versus a game that is flat out missing sufficient content for either of their launch characters, and definitely for the other three that joined in after the fact. Simply put, the only silver lining is that Devil May Cry is placed in the category for 2016 and beyond. And every part of me wishes that the and beyond part of that is what applies to Devil May Cry. I hope I'm not alone in wishing for a Devil May Cry that melds the chocolate and peanut butter of Devil May Cry 3's breadth and progression with DMC4's control and refinement, and then taking the best of both to even greater heights. It sounds like a pipe dream, but if anybody could do it, now's the time when it would be most possible, and Capcom would be the ones to do it. It's been more than a decade since Devil May Cry 3 came out. I think it's about time that that game was iterated upon and brought into the current generation in a way that's fitting for this franchise, and it's hopefully ongoing legacy. And if that means waiting for several more years, then fine. But Please, Capcom, actually use that time to make something amazing. Don't give me another special edition. I don't want a new Devil May Cry in the next year or two. That's just not reasonable anymore. Moreover, if there is a Devil May Cry announcement at a conference this upcoming year, and it contains any type of release window instead of in development, then I'll be very disappointed in Capcom and worried about Devil May Cry. I know we ended on a bit of a sour note here, but that's just my honest take on things. Obviously, I have nothing but the brightest of hopes, but as always, somehow things don't always turn out the way that they should. My name has been Vash TSB, and I'll see you guys soon.